Hey, everybody. Welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 237, being recorded on February 6th, 2013. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malentano. And we have another week's worth of hardware news and articles to talk about. Uh, as you can see, we're all very excited to be here. If you're joining us live, pcpar.com slash live is the place where you are at. If you aren't joining us live, that's where you should go in order to join us live. We record the show on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Get here a little early, see the pre-show antics. Sometimes we make fun of Josh, sometimes we make fun of Alan. We don't really make fun of Jeremy enough. He doesn't talk much. It's eh. just too easy. Yeah. We we'll have to make fun of the background or something on him. We later. make fun of Canada, and that covers Jeremy. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So, 10 p.m. Wednesdays. That's where we record. Uh, and let's get started with with some stuff that went on. First things first. Let's get these out of the way uh, because Lee doesn't ever join our podcast. One day we'll get, he lives 30 minutes from here. I should have him sit in this other seat. We should maybe do that one time. So he does all of our power supply reviews, and we have two... And you know what the best thing about Lee is? Um, no. He actually writes things and l uploads them. On a regular interval. <laughs> yes. It's Unlike all... others. Uh, hmm. Mm. That would be Josh. Yeah. Um, How's that sweet candy tasting? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yum. Mmm. Good. <laughs> Uh, so the first review is of the EVGA Supernova ANIAC 750G, which uh, falls in line with what I would expect from an EVGA named device. Supernova, ANIACs, those are all, you know, harsh, kind of uh, angry uh, type um, product names. 750 watts. This is not the first EVGA review we did. Is, is that not the, the uh, worst possible name for a power supply? Supernova. <laughs> You'll see this very bright, powerful light, and then everything explodes and well, then goes dark. That's yeah, that's actually it's, that's an interesting point. Um, we'll 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 leave that as feedback for them uh, when they listen to the show. So the Supernova brand, five-year warranty, eighty plus gold certified, uh, one hundred thirty-nine dollar kind of MSRP. It's kind of right in line with where you would normally see some of the higher end, excuse me, uh, seven hundred fifty watt power supplies. Jumping right to the end here, this did not get an award from Lee. You can see there are some listed weaknesses here. It doesn't support the Supernova monitoring software, which is one of the big things for EVGA's first line of power supplies that they released. Uh, voltage regulation not up to par with competitive units. AC ripple is a bit high uh, and a relatively noisy fan. And apparently the price is a little bit high for uh, a lot of the competition as well. So competition being other Seasonic units, Corsair units, PC power and cooling still, those types of things. Um, so, But if you're looking for power supply, check out that review. Also, we have another one of the exact same wattage from Seasonic that actually got an Editor's Choice Award from Lee. Um, this one is, let's see, maybe this will mean something to the highly technical people. It is a 12-volt line regulation improved to plus or minus 2% instead of plus or minus 3%. So they're getting a little bit tighter on those specific values. Um, flat black DC cables, easier to install and better airflow. Again, brings it back to the days where we used to take our own IDE cables and, and wind them up. Ken remember those, remembers, remembers those days pretty well, I'm sure. I did that. I don't think you did. I did that. All right. He says he did that. Well, his, his parents used that as a belt when he went to catch because <laughs> when he was five years old. So, uh, this unit's, that's his first memory. This unit's also 80 plus gold, and it has a seven-year manufacturer's warranty, which is which is pretty impressive. Rated at 105 C, uh, and then there's different designations in terms of if you 850 or 650, 750, which pinout combinations you get. Um, so again, I will go ahead and jump to the end here. Definitely check out fan noise, power consumption, or power regulation, that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is the same price, 139 bucks. Uh, at Newegg, but minor weaknesses are none noted, which is a pretty good sign that you're going to get uh, an award of some kind uh, from from Lee on the uh, on the power supply side. So he says good voltage regulation, uh, efficiency, low AC ripple, even at 100% load, silent fanless operation at lower power levels, very quiet operation at the mid power levels, single 12 volt output can do 62 amps. So I don't know, is that enough to do arc welding, Alan, or is that, that's not enough? He's, He's not even listening. He's not, 
he's gone. He's disappeared. I'm here. He's angry. It's angry Alan. <laughs> he's angry. mad at Origin, Origin still. Yeah, I could see. I could tell it. It's in his. It's in his his face. face is oh, red. Look, look, Origin has encountered a serious problem and must close. You should do that. That sounds serious. Restart Hopefully it'll Origin. close your sky. I heard. Too I heard there was next. a. <clears throat> I heard there was a bug in Origin that wouldn't let you install games to a 19 terabyte uh, partition. <laughs> Oh, it's just well, it's a good thing mine's uh, 24. <laughs> 19 or higher, I meant. 19 or higher. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, Seven-year warranty. That's a little more than large address aware. Yeah, yeah. So check out that review as well. So it's kind of interesting to see. You can actually, if you're looking for a power supply in that 750 range, you can kind of compare um, the Seasonic and the EVGA models and see what you get out of it. So, Alan, could, could you possibly take a power supply, high, you know, enough amperage, and create a arc welder with it without killing yourself? Yeah, you could. Because I think that would be kind of fun to watch. You should do you, this. You think, you think I should? Yeah. Yes. You should. Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think we can do that. You should arc Unless weld we some LED lights into to doing your ceiling. You want, me to, you want me to weld my engine block with the... Uh, why is my dad calling? Yes! <sighs> someone's, someone's calling you. Yeah, I know. Yes, the answer is yes to welding. It's the Origin, Origin telling me I don't know. <laughs> uh, we hear that you're going to do this mod and it's unsafe. Yeah, they're listening in. All arc welders have very good um, resources. They listen in to all these types of uh, technology podcasts. In case anybody figures it out that you can buy a $130 object to do this, and they don't, they don't want that to happen. No. Anyway, let's talk with Alan about an SSD review you posted up today. The A-Data XPG SX900. Another quality model numbering system 128 gig yep. ssd this is um sandforce 2281 anything kind of stand out about this particular drive uh the big deal here is well first of all it's just a standard sandforce 2281 it uses from what i can tell it uses this the standard base firmware from sandforce not really optimized but still a decent firmware um they have current updates at least as of like uh, five or six months ago from sandforce via a data so you can get the non-automatic bricking version of the firmware from like what two years ago that's good um so that's that definitely a good thing um well it wasn't automatic bricking it was just random Likely. roll the dice bricking it like was it, semi-automatic it was bricking happy. and you couldn't yeah, have more than the 30 ssd clip um, or... <laughs> so those days are pretty much in the past we haven't seen drastic crazy failure reports for a while now so i'm just going to go on the assumption that they fixed it in firmware um so, decent drive. Uh, the thing that really caught my eye, though, was when I went to go look up pricing at the end of the article. Um, this thing's like 70 cents a gig, like, from what appears to be all the time. Hmm. So, you know, pretty good. So, that's just kind of its regular... 180, bu- 180 bucks yeah. for a 256 gig unit is pretty nice. Yeah. Now, you say in the, in the conclusion that the most recent was 502. Uh, somebody in the comments there said that um, the newest Sandforce is 505. So, True. I mean, do you think that there's any any major drawback to not being able to get 505 for your A data? Because these aren't, you can't no, get that from I haven't heard from, anything as far as... You can't get it directly from Sandforce, so, yeah. right? No, you cannot. It's drive-specific. It has to be uh, passed through whoever the manufacturer is, and then they have to have their... Uh, even if they get the firmware update tool straight from Sandforce, it's still keyed to the name of the label of the drive, like the awesome. ID of the drive. Okay. All right. But, so, uh, but I mean, that's that's new enough firmware-wise. It how, doesn't. In terms of controllers, where does this sit in terms of age at this point for the 2281? In terms of age, mm-hmm. like when it wa- well, realize 2281 when it first launched. Uh, that was, it was a year and a half ago, like, wasn't it? Two years ago now? Sandforce yeah, 2? Yeah, it's pushing like it's, it's like over a year and a half ago. Um, hmm. I remember those initially launched with the reduced capacity and stuff, right? There was like, instead of 120 gig, you'd have like 100 gig. They sort of did the same thing, like their enterprise-ish sort of over-provisioning to try to speed things up even further, even though it really didn't need it in the end because they, you know, they did the same thing with the 3 gigabit version of it as well. Um, where you had all those hundred, you know, it was like a Vertex 2, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Was it the 2, I think, way back then? Uh, um, two, 2 or 3? Yeah, Vertex 2. Okay. 
well, there was the two was the three gigabit version, and then the three was the mm-hmm. six yeah. gigabit version, right? Which was the twenty two eighty one. Um, but you just really don't need that much over provisioning, especially in a sand force based drive that does compression in the background anyway, which is effectively giving you even more over provisioning than you had at the, to start with. Um, as far as what's actually written to the flash versus what you're trying to write to the drive. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's as far as the firmware, I'm I'm fine with a six month old firmware. Realize you're probably not going to be updating this firmware every five minutes. I hope not. Anyway, you know, you're just you're just looking for one that's not at risk of bricking and gives you decent performance, which way long, like probably a year ago, that firmware did that. So yeah, again, yeah. not the most. It's not the most recent available, but it's the most recent available from A Data, and it's new enough for me. All right, and for the price, it's pretty, probably a little bit. Yeah, more I mean that's that's beat. great for the price. That's exactly yeah. what I think people should be looking for: is those sort of off to the side manufacturers that aren't necessarily the popular ones, mm-hmm. not necessarily the ones that people are looking for all the time. But if they have a a, a decently recent firmware for Sandforce, and they're making that product with that, especially with IMFT Flash in it. Um, yeah, you know, really. It's how how does it compare you know, to say like the Agility Three, which has the what the asynchronous or I can't remember the. Oh, okay, so it actually loses to the Agility Three because it not only has asynchronous but it's optimized, right? OCC and their IndieLinks group or whatever rewrote that firmware. So you have the uh, Vertex Three slash Agility Three slash Intel Five Twenty series. Right, which are all optimized firmware and like performance optimized versus um, actually the one I threw in the review just as an example was the Corsair Force 3, not the GT version, which is Corsair's version of the Agility 3, which is the asynchronous flash. Okay. Right? But it's actually much slower if you look on the page with the IO meter results. You can tell that there's a, you know, so this ADATA drive with the synchronous flash actually is going faster than the Corsair. Uh, you know, Corsair 4 series, but it still lags behind drives like the Agility 3. Even though they have the same kind of flash and same kind of controller, it's all in the firmware when it comes to that um, IO meter performance. But as far as sequential, reads, writes, that sort of thing, they're all pretty much even. Gotcha. Um, it's, it's when you get into the heavy-duty, random then. access kind of stuff, that's where the firmware really really matters. Yeah, here's here's a screenshot of random reads... Um, sequential reads. That's the uh, that's the yap stuff. Yeah, that's pretty. That's not going to show pre- you a whole lot. Pretty bunched up. They pretty much all. Yeah, they all just saturate the bus. But then here's here's the iometer, iometer, whichever how you want to pronounce it. And you see iometer. That? iometer. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. It, 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 iometer. It shows a pretty good spread. So you have like, and I did throw in the more recent, like the vector. Right. And, sure. Uh, sure. No, I mean that's fair. You got to know what's what's currently available. So. Yep, and I threw in the uh, the Samsung A40 Pro, um, and those do sit you know way higher on iOS per second. But realize these things are going really really fast. I mean, when you're when, so, what's you your know, favorite controller it, right now, Alan? My favorite right now is uh, actually the A40 Pro. Because you don't of the like it more than the uh, if you look at the it, well, it's, five? Wait, it's sort of a toss up between the Vector and the A40 Pro. Too uh, honestly, my name. take on that would be. Whichever you can get for the lower cost per gig, between those two. Right. All right. That's that would be my current favorite. I'll just shift it back and forth <laughs> based on pricing. My current favorite is no, whatever is the cheapest. Get <laughs> but at well, least the cheapest you, for between those performance, two. right? Right, right. I mean, I'm not going to go as far as to say my favorite is this drive because it's really, really cheap cost per gig wise. Um, you know, because I want I personally want a little more performance than that. I'm more of a power hungry kind of. Dude, this would be a great drive for me to say use on our GPU test bed where we want speed, but we don't need the bleeding edge in terms of IOs per second, right? We just want something that's going to have a, a pretty good sequential exactly. read rate or, so we can load or, up. Or, dare games. I say, this is a plenty good drive for anybody that's still using a hard drive. Yeah, I mean, seriously, for an upgrade, it's going to be that's... such a good, it's going to be such a big jump for them. And if they are still using a hard drive even today, they probably were, you know, uh, taken aback by just the pricing of SSDs in general for right. the past several years. Right. So this is real cheap. 
just do do it. You know. I mean, there's still there's still an order of magnitude cost difference because I think we were pricing out those w, even the WD Reds are like six, six six and a half cents per per gig. Uh, yeah. When you get up into the two and three terabyte models, and then you know we're talking sixties at the minimum for SSDs. So, yeah. but it's cool. But but it, but again, it is an order of magnitude, and then some on performance. Yes. So, gotcha. Um, you know the best part about yeah. this podcast is Ryan. Mm. Is that I, I'm getting you cut off now and then, and so I thought you said it's not comfortable being on the bleeding edge, and I thought you know what, probably never a truer thing has been said. <laughs> and I think even poor, e- poor even Ed. if that was artificially cut off, you should write that down and put it on your wall. I think I think that's frameable. It's uncomfortable to be on the bleeding edge. <laughs> it always is. Uh, let's yes. talk about the new 3D Mark benchmark that came out this week. Uh, it is just called 3D Mark. It's not 3D Mark 13. It's not 3D Mark 2013. It's not 3D Mark 14 or 15 or 16. It's just called 3D Mark. Um, take that for for what you will. Uh, the future Mark had has gone through this weird, not weird, but I guess it's kind of expected change. So inside 3D Mark now, there are three separate tests. There are you can see in this table. There's Ice Storm, there's Cloud Gate, and there's Fire Strike, and Ice Storm is DirectX feature level 9 or equivalent, and it can run on Windows, Windows RT, Android, and Apple iOS. Uh, CloudGate can run on Windows RT and Windows. Firestrike can run on Windows RT and Windows. Are you sure that they're not confused and these aren't the, the two companions of Spider-Man in the 1980s? Ice Storm, CloudGate, and Firestrike? Yes. They are pretty kind of generic sounding names, aren't they? They're, yeah. just, they're just like... They were going to do Ice Storm, Cloud Storm, Fire Storm, but then maybe somebody thought that was a little bit too generic. Um, so we'll talk about the Fire Strike stuff, which is kind of like the enthusiast one a little bit later. Ice Storm is the most interesting to me because it will run on uh, Windows, RT, Android, and Apple operating systems. And you can see here in this wonderful screenshot, we did a video interview, me on the left, on the right, You'll see the president of Future Mark, Oliver uh, Baltic, who um, did a pretty good job of explaining what different technologies were. Like on Android and iOS, you don't use DirectX, you're using OpenGL. And they basically went on to say that it's not exactly the same from a scientific standpoint, but they matched feature for feature, image quality for image quality across the board as best as they could, so that they are uh, at least in application comparable side by side. So this will be one of the times, one of the few times where you'll be able to compare, say, this Lenovo tablet that runs Windows 8 Pro to Microsoft Surface that runs Windows RT to the Nexus 10 that runs Android to the iPad 4 that runs iOS. And you'll be able to run a single benchmark that would be pretty close and equivalent across all of them, testing the CPU, testing the GPU portion. So it's kind of interesting. Um, now, unfortunately, those versions aren't available yet. All we have are the uh, x86 variant, which we went through and did some testing on. And, um, you know, we, we've actually got videos. It didn't load up on this one, but I'll load it up on the other one that show you the run-throughs of the CloudGate benchmark. Oh, awesome. They're not loading for me right now. But CloudGate Firestrike, you can see here. Um, and uh, if you go to our article, you can see the YouTube videos that will show you all the benchmark runs if you haven't had a chance to download 3D Mark. It's still, there is still a free version uh, that you can access that will run the tests. You can't modify things. You don't get access to some of the cool uh, data analysis graphs and that kind of stuff um, that we just show you here on these, on these screenshots. So after it finishes, it gives you information like um, frame rate over time, your CPU temperature, your GPU temperature, your CPU power draw, your CPU clock, and it monitors all those in a kind of per, on a per test basis, which is kind of cool. And you can zoom in and you can get actual individual numbers. They did, they did a pretty good job on, on uh, um, presenting the data better than they have in the past, for sure. So here's some scores for some high-end configurations running Ice Storm, which is the DX9 level. And you'll see we're getting scores of, I don't know, 139,000 points. For 7970 Crossfire, uh, and that results that that is because we had frame rates in the 1500 frames per second range on uh, the graphics test. So obviously a little bit of overkill on the hardware there. If you look at CloudGate, we're talking about frame rates in the 300s and the 400s, but they scale all the way down. We tested a Radeon HD 7770 down into the 70s and 80s. So there is some benefit to that test, but the real 
it's a real benchmark for you know discrete cards, add-in cards, and gamers is going to be Fire Strike. That's the DX11 feature set. Pretty impressive to watch. Um, and our scores range from 11.2 for 79.70 Crossfire down to 2,700 for the 77.70. And you can see the frame rates scale on that on that regard as well. Um, it's a synthetic benchmark. So we talk in that video interview that I did with uh, Oliver about what that means. No, you shouldn't depend solely on this. Yes, they can be in, in, uh, uh, informative. Uh, and he used a, a pretty good explanation as to why, you know, even gamers should pay attention to these benchmarks. You know, a lot of people want to use only real world games, which is completely valid concern for running benchmarks and, and evaluating performance of graphics cards. He says one of the things that benchmarks can do that game engines usually can't do is that game developers won't code for the edges of performance, right? They're not going to push um, memory bandwidth limitations or volumetric lighting limitations beyond where current hardware is comfortable performing at, right? And in a lot of different areas in the same way. Whereas with a benchmark, you know, they have two graphics tests, they have a physics test, and they have a combined test. And even though they're based on the same engine, um, they're configured so that you know, G the graphics test one pushes certain elements of the GPU and, and rendering pipeline, and graphics test two pushes different elements and envelopes and limits. Uh, and the physics test obviously does the CPU, and then combined kind of maybe does a, a tries to look at it more in, on a on what a game would actually do. And so, it's an it's a good data point to have for he says claims you know game engines how they will react in 24 to 36 months. I think that may be a little bit too far out. Um, but, you know, this was an interesting idea that I had while we were having this conversation with him was, can we go back, see when 3D Mark 11 came out, look at the performance of how 3D Mark looked on graphics cards, the, the top end graphics cards of that day, and then use those same graphics cards on games like Sleeping Dogs, Hitman, Battlefield 3, those kind of modern titles, and see if maybe there is any kind of correlation to that, like if that actually would... Um, would would stand there uh it would be it would be cool to see the extreme version of the test if you enable fire fire strike extreme actually runs at 2560 by 1440 um which is which is cool to see you know resolutions creeping up to uh these higher levels it wouldn't complete on our 7770 6870 650 ti or 560 ti uh and even our GTX 680 SLI or 7970 Crossfire were, were barely breaching 30 frames per second on one of the tests and 20 frames per second on another. Um, and actually on the combined test, 11.5 and 10.5 frames per second. So it's definitely a, a taxing, taxing engine in those regards. So like I said, it's free. You can still go download it. Um, very impressive visuals. And I would encourage you guys to go to uh, PCPro.com and, and find this article and look at that interview that I did with uh, Oliver because it, it's, it's like 26, 27 minutes long, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what their you know? rendering targets were, <laughs> rendering targets were for Ice Storm, what they were for CloudGate, what they were for Firestrike, how they plan on kind of addressing uh, all these different market segments now and, and why they would, you know... Uh, want to target cell phones and tablets and that kind of stuff in addition to these high-end triple card crossfire and sli configurations and that kind of stuff have any of you guys downloaded the new version and tried it out or anything yeah i haven't I yet up. but i've i heard the scream of glee of competitive overclockers everywhere when they realized they'd finally have a different video to watch when they were overclocking <laughs> you know what's funny is i asked him you know because if you look at it the Ice Storm, which is the most basic test in 3D Mark, uh, maybe compares to like 3D Mark 2001 or something like that. Maybe what, what was what was between that and 06? Was there 3D Mark 03 or something? Yeah, yeah, three. Uh, yeah. And then at the airplanes. You and then know, if you look at cows. CloudGate, it kind of looks like 3D Mark Vantage. And then if you look at Firestrike, it's like 3D Mark 11 Plus. Uh, and I said, is, is was part of this maybe to try to get those people away from using those older benchmarks into this newer application? And, and he said, well, maybe that might have been a goal. But there are some people that are like 3D Mark 2001 specialists in terms of professional overclockers and benchmarkers and stuff like that. And they'll never, they'll never leave 
uh, those benchmarks alone. They'll never stop using them because that is what they have been learning all of these years. And it seems absolutely ludicrous to me. We, Ken and I were talking about this before, but that there are professional overclockers that use LN2 that are still using 8800 GTs and trying to get the best overclock they can on a system with an 8800 GT. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're finally, I don't, I don't think a lot of them are going to get rid of it. You know, maybe we'll see the casual laptop reviewers drop 3D Mark 06 in favor of Ice Storm and CloudGate and that kind of stuff, but uh, we'll see. Josh, you said you did download it and try it out? Yeah, it works on uh, Windows 7, of course, which is nice. Yep. I, I originally thought that this would be kind of like uh, you can only run the top end test on Windows 8, but it's just not the case. Nope. So, you know, it looks nice. And I, I agree that, uh, you know, Ice Strike. And, Fire Strike. Uh, Fire Strike. <laughs> Ice Storm. It's 3D Mark and his amazing friends. I, I posted a link to Spider Man. Never mind. Do I want to click that? See it. I don't really want to click that. Okay. You want to go? No, no, you click the shorter one, the YouTube. Okay. Right. Because I can do a voiceover with 3D Mark and his amazing friends. And I'd rather be just not. just as effective. I'd rather. Nah. Yeah. Nah, I'll anyway. pass. Uh, and other news. Uh, but it's, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was moving on. So if you want You're something to say on? about this, then go ahead. Uh, well, why don't you move on with MSI? I will do that. I've got nothing to say. Speaking of 3D Mark. MSI has the MSI. MSI is the, the the I guess we'll call them the title sponsor of the new 3D Mark Fire Strike benchmark. Their logo appears in several places during the demo. Um, so they they have the three the MSI 3D Mark Challenge um, that basically is an overclocking contest in honor of the new 3D Mark's release. Motherboard and graphics card manufacturers letting users of their parts enter a contest for the highest 3D Mark scores um, in a partnership with HW Bot, MSI wants to see top scores for the Fire Strike test on the new, newly released 3D Mark. The contest will run until March 3rd, so you don't have... Eh, you've got a little bit less than a month left. Uh, for entries looking to post top ranks, beyond that, anyone with an MSI Z77 motherboard who enters before February 10th will be entered into a lucky draw, um, which in the U.S. is uh, a raffle. Uh, for the MSI Z77A GD55. So they have winners if you actually post top results on any hardware, and then if you uh, have an MSI Z77 motherboard, because it does a test, it'll know what hardware you're submitting it on, you'll be entered into a contest there. So even if you have a crappy system, if you have an MSI Z77 board, you can run it, submit your score, and be entered for a chance to win that. So uh, you can find the link on PCPer.com or... Uh, I don't know, Google MSI 3D Mark Challenge because I don't feel like giving out to hwbot.org. You can probably just go to hwbot.org uh, for that. So, uh, free stuff. Everybody likes free stuff. Now, speaking of MSI and Z77 motherboards, it's time to thank MSI for being a sponsor of this week's PC Perspective podcast. Get the best of the best with MSI GeForce GTX graphics cards. The award-winning Twin Frozen series of GPU coolers feature a nickel-plated copper base, large 8mm super pipes, dense heat-in stack, and the innovative propeller blade design with dust removal technology. Coupled with our industry-leading military-class component design and the widely acclaimed Afterburner overclocking software, MSI provides the best in overclocking and gaming on your rig. Gear up and game on with MSI GeForce GTX today. Just kidding. <laughs> Graphics card ad on that one. So, but thank you seriously, uh, everybody in the chat room. I want a on the count of three. I want everybody to say thank you, MSI, for continuing to support the podcast. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Otherwise, I would never bring Jeremy, Josh, or Alan back. Um, it wouldn't. It just wouldn't be worth it to me to have to deal with that on a weekly basis. So. Um, yes, cash. We know you like Alex makes One, two, three. Far more bearable. Thank you, Alex and MSI. And then Ken will take some screenshots of it, and we'll send it over to uh, to MSI and to thank them. So, yay! There they are. All right. Um, so let's move on to. Oh, speaking of free stuff, we are also having a contest on PCPer.com. If you go to PCPer.com and scroll down a little bit, you will see the title. I'd like to keep it simple for you guys. The title is Win Free Stuff, 
Seasonic M12 to 850 and 750 watt PSU up for grabs. And you can see here we have two power supplies from Seasonic that are going to be given away. An 850 and a 750 watt unit, uh, retail value 130 and 120 dollars respectively. And it really couldn't be any easier to enter this contest, right? Uh, you go to this post, you then visit your favorite PC Perspective pages like the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, and our Twitter account. You should subscribe, like, and follow us because we want you to. Um, but then also stop by the Seasonic Facebook page. Give it a like if you want. They are always having contests. So if you like the possibility of winning free stuff, you can uh, check that out too. And then leave a comment on that news post at PCPer.com telling us what you would be able to do better if your system was powered by one of these power supplies. Uh, you don't have to be a registered user on the account. You can leave an anonymous. Just make sure you actually use an actual email address because that's how we contact people. And you can see we have we have lots of submissions already. So only six pages. Uh, well, actually, I think it's more than that. I just think it only shows six. But we'll go from there, and we'll run this until next week. We'll announce the winner on next week's podcast. So check it out. Free things. All right, we like Newegg here for the most part. They sell a lot of PC components. Uh, but apparently they did us a big favor over the last couple of weeks. Jeremy, you know anything about this and the whole shopping cart deal? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, you know, patent trolling at its complete and utter best. Uh, it's a company that calls themselves Sovereign. And they sort of claim that they have a product, uh, which I cannot think of the name of it right this moment, but it says... Uh, what did they transact? It's supposed to be mm. a secure uh, database transfer thing. Thing is, court records have shown this company has never sold a single thing ever. Sweet. Period. Nice. What they do is they make patents. One of the patents that they did was a patent on any sort of online purchase uh, which involved a transactor and a transactee and a theoretical container in which to hold the purchase, per se, a shopping cart. And so they went successfully after quite a few people over the years. Uh, they got a good chunk of money uh, from, and why did you just close? What, like Nordstrom's and Avon? Uh, oh, God, Nordstrom's, Avon. Victoria's Secret. Uh, no, Victoria's they took Secret. money from those models. Uh, they went after eBay, although they didn't. Uh, follow through with it um, because eBay had done something but they have just been collecting millions in royalties in uh, the case of Victoria's Secret and Avon we're talking 18 million bucks up front and a royalty of about 1% for every sale which involves a shopping cart Newegg decided to say screw you we're taking you to court it's only two and a half mil but there's no way in hell that this is going to stand and it didn't Newegg took them to court, won, and now this this wonderful company, this, uh, what is her name, uh, Catherine Wolinick, or Wolinick, is an ex-attorney who has a bunch of friends. She is the entire company. There, there is only just the one friggin' person. And they're now on the hook for the winnings that they got against Victoria's Secret, Avon, uh, Nordstrom's, Macy's, Home Depot, Radio Shack, Kohl's, and even more. And the royalties as well. So, nice. of course, so, you know, they're probably just going to declare bankruptcy and get sword. away with it. Sorry? So, or sort of live, live by the sword, die by the sword. The Ash word. Yes. So, so we have in Newegg to thank for this, right? And, yes, Newegg and saved our nice obviously they, not patentable technology. I just, I hate people so often. Um, I know why. I know. Let's talk about something more exciting, more interesting, better for us. Newegg did us yeah, a, a great favor. Yeah, Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret. You know, let's talk about Victoria's Secret. You know, somebody someone really uh, sent me a Twitter to today oh, and said that she was, you know, walking around Victoria's Secret and she she said, you know, I just don't understand the idea behind crotchless panties, and the only thing that that came to mind was window treatments. About as useful. Mm, yeah, okay. No. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see. Yeah. All right. 
Well, let's go. Let's it move was, forward. Let's I got to tell you, that. that joke was a little drawn out. Like, you tried a little too hard with the bit in the tweet thing in there. I know. I got to work on the timing. Some random person sent me a tweet about underwear from Victoria's Secret. Yeah. You should block it because that's spam, and they're only going to. It's a phishing scam. What is? Yeah. Ooh. How many times did you send your credit card? Not if you enjoy it, it isn't. <laughs> uh, let's talk about AMD's desire to give everybody free games when they buy uh graphics cards their crutches bundle yeah um so the never settle bundle last year included uh far cry 3 medal of honor sleeping dogs and hitman absolution in some combination thereof they just announced uh, at the beginning of february the never settle reloaded bundle which actually includes games like tomb raider bioshock devil may cry uh at least in uh, where is that at that's only in uh Japan, I think, Asia markets, and Crisis 3. So here's how it works. You buy a 7900 series card now, you get Crisis 3 and Bioshock Infinite for free. You buy a 7800 series card, you get Bioshock Infinite and Tomb Raider for free. Those are, all three of those games are top AAA titles that are going to be out. Um, no, Crisis, I'd argue the third, but... Tomb Raider is Tomb going to be big. I think, I think it'll be bigger than you, than you think it is going to be, but if she's crotchless, yeah, yeah. If she's crotchless, or the never mind. That's kind of gross. That. Because yeah, is she like a mutant woman. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, we're not. I don't want to get into that. Mm. Crisis three comes out February nineteenth, March fifth for Bioshock, and March something else for I don't know. We'll say the nineteenth for that one as well, or twenty sixth for Tomb Raider. Uh, so you get keys for those if you buy a seventy nine hundred card. Um, also interesting, if you buy two 7900 cards or you buy one of the dual GPU 7900 cards like the Devil 13 or something like that, you'll get all three of those games, Crisis 3, Bioshock Infinite, and Tomb Raider, as well as Far Cry 3, Hitman Absolution, and Sleeping Dogs. So you're going to get six games if you buy two 7900 cards. That's actually um, pretty awesome. Right, so if we if we look at it, let's if we lowball it and say those are all fifty dollars games instead Do of the math. six sixty dollars games, that's three hundred dollars worth of games for buying what maybe six hundred dollars worth of video cards or something like that. If you get two seventy nine fifties, then you're talking about six hundred dollars in, in GPUs. You get three hundred dollars in games with it. Uh, it's a, it's a really compelling offer, and I hope they do. I don't know. I'm imagining they spend a lot of money to get Crisis Three. Uh, as their as their partner right there, I think Nvidia well, and AMD have been fighting on it. How many how many copies of Crisis Two that they actually sell with all of the backlash? I don't know. I, I is that a rhetorical question? Because I have no idea what an actual value would be. I, I I don't either. Even though I know that both of us own that stinking game. Oh yeah, it wasn't. I, I didn't think it was that bad. To be perfectly honest with you, it wasn't great. But I I have unfortunately played worse titles as well um so yeah you can actually get 7950 cards starting at 295 bucks that come with crisis 3 and bioshock infinite or you know you can get two of them and get all six of those games oops and then um 7870s at just 209 that get bioshock and tomb raider so you're talking about 209 video 209 dollar video card that you can then get a hundred dollars worth of games with so amd is definitely uh pushing harder in this in this respect and uh I'll, I'll be curious to see what nvidia's response is if they have any um and yeah i don't know now the what well, the response is they're just gonna throw shield handhelds at their competitors just hit them with it like like rocks yeah they're gonna go up to them and they're just just as a blunt them. object hit them in the back of the head type of thing Christ three here you go Bang. <laughs> yeah, but can you play it on your mobile device with your GeForce GTX? Nope, you cannot. Didn't think so. Um, so yeah, I, I'll be curious to see what how people react to this, right? Because there was a huge push in Q4 over the holidays with the Never Settle bundle. I haven't seen any any marketing push on this yet, other than just kind of announcing it and that kind of deal. So hopefully we'll see we'll see some of that soon. I know there will be game streams on all three of these titles at pcper.com slash live. So uh, on launch day for Crisis 3, for Bioshock Infinite and Tomb Raider, we're going to do game streams, uh, I think at 8 p.m. Eastern, all three of them. Um, 
but check pcpro.com slash live or pcpro.com for the schedule on the right hand side because we will have things to give away and to discuss during those streams uh jeremy you there let's talk about lenovo Oh, Lenovo, the uh, company which is laughing at every other computer selling company on the planet right now? Because yes, we've no. been having some significant downturns as far as the market goes for selling computers, be it whole systems or be it components, uh, unless you're buying Lenovo. Lenovo is looking at worldwide p PC shipments going up by almost 8%. The gross profit this year was $1.1 billion with the operating profit of 243 million. It like they're more about 25% more business than we're looking at last quarter or this time last year. Now, of course that makes a lot of sense. We are talking about what used to be IBM and you know, honestly I've worked with Lenovo's quite a bit. They honestly do live up to the standards that you would expect um, from the old IBM laptops. So, Lenovo when they first started out, people were kind of wondering you know, is this just going to be crap all of a sudden, you know, it's it's not local anymore, what's going on? Well, past 13 quarters, they are outpacing the industry by leaps and bounds. So it's obvious that people actually have really good faith in the quality of the brand. And, you know, for the most part, their traditional stuff is very good. Some of the newer stuff that they're trying out, you know, I'm not too sold on. You've had a bit more experience than I have, uh, Ryan, with the, the newer ones. But, you know, even that tablet that you were just poking at. Yeah, uh, I'm not, was... I don't want to judge on that yet because we're having a technical issue. But, I mean, it's, uh, they've done a good job with innovation. Uh, and they've, they've, they've created things like the Yoga and the Twist that, we rev that we've reviewed all pretty positively. Uh, we have the, the tablet, too, which is using the, the Clover Trail part. Um, and they still make the best business machines, I think, for yeah. the for the money. Uh, and they've obviously and reasonable up or repairs. Oh yeah. Some places you go to, uh, if you're looking at a replacement motherboard, you might as well just buy two new laptops for the same price. They're going to charge it for that right. damn uh, motherboard. Lenovo isn't Ooh. quite that bad. Um, something else that's 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 making a trend is tiny computers. We talked about the Intel NUC. We have a Zotac. Um, Nano XS8013 that I need to finish writing a review of. Uh, and Sapphire got their edge. Yep. This is uh, something that Tim posted up this week, the fanless mint box PC. And this is a fanless Linux mint project-based machine. Cut the price by almost $100. Um, so it's like, what is it, $379.99 now? What do you get with this? You get an AMD GT40N APU. Josh, do you know what the hell that is? Um, I think it's a curiously strong APU. I get it. I see what you did there because it's a mint. I mint got box. it. It runs at 1 gigahertz. It has 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, it has the Radeon G290 GPU, a 250 gig hard drive, aluminum chassis that acts as a heat sink. Uh, it is essentially CompuLab's Fit PC3 case with a few custom tweaks and uh, to add the Linux Mint logo with the Linux Mint 13 operating system. So Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's a pretty well decked out mini PC. It just happens to be running Linux instead of any other operating system, which is which is kind of nice. Three hundred seventy nine dollars, and reportedly, ten percent of the proceeds will go to the Linux Mint project to assist the development of the open source operating system. So, if you're looking for something not of the Windows nature, then uh, take a look at the fanless Mint Box PC. Now, this is this is kind of interesting business news. Dell is tired of all of your whining. They're tired of everybody bitching at them. So they're going to take their business and they're going to go home. They're going to buy themselves back into private status with apparently a $24.4 billion deal that will see Dell leave Wall Street and return to a privately held company. Michael Dell has managed to secure funding for the buyout offer, which amounts to $13.65 per share. Uh, funding includes... Cash and equity from Michael Dell and Dell's own cash. Silver Lake, MSD Capital, $2 billion loan from Microsoft, which definitely is interesting. Uh, oh, they like doing that. They've loaned money to Apple before. Did they really? Oh, yeah. That sounds Way dumb. back in the day. Oh, uh, okay. Did they ever get their money yeah, back? How, how many Windows 8 licenses will that buy? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, 
And then new debt financing from Merrill Lynch, Barclays, blah, 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 blah. So this is, this is kind of interesting. What do we take from this? Is it just, is it really that executives are tired of having to answer to Wall Street every time they don't have a stellar yeah. quarter? Or is, it, is there more to the Microsoft loaning them some cash option maybe? You know, I, I think it's the people who actually run the company see their wealth going up and down in these radical radical shifts depending mm -hmm. on what quarter it is and by going pri private instead of you know handing out shares to to employees they actually hand out money where they can invest save spend do whatever the hell they want and they don't have to follow all these you know gap versus non gap garbage i mean it's a private company where they don't have all this garbage around them and they don't have to deal with the SEC. They can just run stuff. Either you make money or you don't. It's not like, hey, we've made money this 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 quarter, even though it wasn't as much as the analysts were expecting. And so our stock goes down 20% for no real reason, even though that we're, we're keeping profitable. Well, but they can't define the we're organic growth our that the market will achieve over the next quarter. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, I don't yeah. know why anybody really goes um, public, unless you know, unless you're lucky. Get rich. Like Microsoft in the early '90s, and you know, make billions that way. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes yeah, I think you reach you reach the point in the life of a company where you're not really going to expand a whole lot more. Yeah. You're going to expand maybe five, six percent over the entire lifetime because. There's only so much product you can push. There's only so many consumers out there. And even though we've got a growing planet with more and more people, you're just not going to see these, these you know, rags to riches type stories uh, when you reach a certain point. So it, it almost makes more sense to go private in some of these situations so you can avoid all of the garbage that uh, you get with you know, being in the market. I mean, that's why I'm still a privately held company as well, because I don't want to yes. have to deal with that, right? Well, that no one will buy your no. company. The last thing I need is shareholders like my wife and my dad breathing down my neck about Josh being slow on articles or something like that, right? I mean, yeah. we'd like to keep yeah. that all in-house. Unfortunately, Josh was late on three articles this month, so our non-GAAP earnings uh, <laughs> was... Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that'll be interesting. I, I, I am still curious if... Microsoft's stake in this new company means more than that. Like, I don't know. Maybe they feel like, I mean, because what is that? So if it's a twenty-four billion dollar deal, to, so they only own what ten less than ten percent of the company. Less than ten percent. Yeah, like maybe, eight. maybe it won't be that interesting. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, like they forked Apple one hundred and fifty mil. Now but Apple's they eventually forking got it back, and it was the it was also the way to get Office, you know, developed relatively properly for Apple. Right. Or at least part of it. We call that so, a bribe case, where I'm hey. from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan, let's talk about hard drives and the potential that uh, the hard drive industry will experience a 12% decline this year. Is the sky falling? No, and nor is this even a shocker, honestly. Well, why not? <laughs> because it's been starting to decline anyway, and people just don't need... 12% is a lot, numbers though. Of, well, yeah, but people are shifting to SSD. There's plenty of systems out there that have SSDs as their only drive present. So is that why we're seeing maybe these hard drive manufacturers try to find a Do niche hybrid. in the SSD stuff? Yeah, like Western Digital launching hybrid at CES. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And probably every other hard drive manufacturer will do that to some extent, I would imagine, if they haven't already. Yeah. So you, you, yeah, I mean, you I mean, don't see just, you don't you know. see any. I mean, is is will we see rising costs because of these lowered uh, maybe units output and that kind of stuff? Because I, the, well, the I don't think twelve percent is enough to yeah. to cause that kind of a thing. You know, if you had fifty percent reduction or something crazy like that, to where people are scaling back their manufacturing process, like pipeline and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, sure. Then it'll get pricier but would, i don't would see that happening with this new models and i mean is it is it a lack of innovation the fact that we haven't seen a lot of four terabyte models or a lot of you know anything beyond that is there is there something maybe else that's that's kind of holding it back i feel more that that's sort of tapered off because of demand 
Because you know what? My three terabyte drive handles all of my porn needs. Well, you're not getting as high definition as I am, I guess. <laughs> Apparently not. Or Alan's. If you're he's doing like in quad, he's he's he, he's doing 4K porn already. <laughs> In 3D, oh, he's yeah. got so the double quality the to uh, Ryan's quality. <laughs> right. No, but I just I just recently within it was like a month and a half ago I upgraded my rate. I only use three terabyte drives, not fours, and I'm like a storage nut. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm and trying I to didn't use go for four. Three but that's what 3D here. TV yeah. was invented for. I mean, it's got to be bigger. Double the pixels. <laughs> Double the fun? Ken says no. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, there was sort of a push. There was a big push on capacity increases, and then it's now it's sort of in a lull. And it's in a lull at the same time that SSDs are really starting to get pretty darn cheap. Um, so wh why isn't Seagate and WD investing more heavily in SSDs? I don't think they have had success in pulling it off if you go by their track records. Right. Other tech is going to transfer. Why don't they buy the somebody? <laughs> LSI Logic bought Sandforce. I mean, yeah, it's just a controller, but still. Well, for okay, so well, you have they've been busy buying all the other hard drive Indy manufacturers. Links. You have a few things at play here, right? It's 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 like a gas gasoline company or an oil company uh, saying that they're going to make like really fuel efficient things, right? That. They're sort of like a, you know, they work against each yeah, other. Yeah, it's right? yeah. Ken, Ken said that here. It's like having Exxon Mobil uh, investing money in ways to get energy without BP yeah. without doing Beyond. it, and they do it. But I think Beyond. they do it because they've been told to do it. <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of like that, Not right? Because so their you're business have, is dying. You know, it's at a given hard drive manufacturer. Uh, you know, in their boardroom. You're going to have people saying, yeah, we should really go SSD. And then they'll be like, well, what, why are we going to shoot ourselves in the foot? Right? Because their main shtick as a hard drive manufacturer is going to be hard disks. Yeah. Why, so, why can't we all just get along? I mean, well, and obviously, that's, and that's people are going to buy is. SSDs. Why are we not wanting to sell them even though we sell hard drives? I, 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 th I see Let's it as just a. Throw money out the window. I see it as so, a. Yeah, so I, I mean, think they need to expand so, into it, but. I think that there's just other companies other than hard drive manufacturers that are the ones that really push the envelope and come out with the really high-performing stuff. And because all of the good tech out there has been gobbled up by all of the SSD-specific people... All right. I've, then I've got all, it. I know the reason. You know, all you're left I know with the, is... Great. What is it? I know the reason. They just don't want to compete with Intel. They saw what happened to AMD. No, because <laughs> Intel's backing out of the consumer space, at least, for the most part. On the SSD side, oh, I, on, I think it's Joe crying. Joe, ha oh. <laughs> Just step on a stream, why don't you? Uh, it, I would say it's more that, you know, the the specialty of manufacturing hard drives is very very different than the specialty of producing SSD technology, whether it's controllers or, or NAND flash and that kind of stuff. And there's very little overlap. So yep. you know, I, here you're a storage company. Why aren't you selling storage products that people want? Yeah. Well, okay, so Western Digital tried, right? Yeah, WD they, Blue. They acquired. They had they had the Blue Series, the SSDs. They acquired. A, they even acquired a different company to. Yeah. What the hell was the name of that company? That whole thing went down. Silicon right? Edge, Ken says. Silicon Edge. Yeah. Yeah. Or Silicon System. They're one of those. It was Edge. Um, yeah, uh, they did that, but unfortunately, that controller just wasn't really competitive. You know, performance-wise, it was a decent controller, but it's it was getting walked all over by all the more recent stuff that was really pushing high IOs per second, and yeah. high throughput, and everything. And it was really, it, honestly, it was bad timing too, right? It's like that finally came out, and then that's when all the Indie Link stuff and everything else was launching at the same time, and it was just, it was yeah. hard to even, you know, portray the drive in a positive light. It was like, well, it's is it cheap? No, it's more expensive than the other guys, and doesn't perform as well. Okay, sorry, that was that was sort of a bust. And you can tell because they're not really pushing that anymore, right? They they stopped. They I don't off think it exists quick. anymore, to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, so I it mean, just sort of evaporated. Even Corsair um, bought a controller company, didn't they? Or they have at least a license agreement with them that they're only going to sell them those what controllers. The company? What the, the what was that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing, but that's sort of the same kind of thing. <laughs> It's, it's there's too much other much better competition out there. So it's hard to differentiate you know. in the SSD market. To be perfectly honest with you, right? I mean, it's it's fast or it's faster. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's even there's only a few pages of uh, given review that I do nowadays, just as evidenced by the review we just published. Right? There was a anything sequential, it just saturates the bus. Yep. So they're they're all basically the same speed, right? All these different SSD controllers and everything is just going as fast as serial ATA six gigabit will let it go. And uh, the only place where they really differentiate each other is the high IOs per second stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All but right. I mean, before you try and oh. count hard drives out, do go remember. Ahead. People still sell tape drives. God, that sounds and awful. It's true. Yeah, they, mm. yeah but the, I don't think it's a thriving that, business. No, it's not a thriving Maxwell, business. still in business. Yep. Or Maxell. I think it's, I think it's still, thriving I mean, only from the... Two terabyte the drive for 90 bucks versus a 250 gig drive for 180 or 170. I mean, they've yeah. still got edges, obviously, especially well, sure. when you have large... Media libraries. Large. Hand waving. Sure. Hand waving. Yeah, for the audio guys, he was waving his hands. Yes. You may have seen this gesture in a Monty but Python still buying, before. You're still stuck Perch. buying two of everything, you know, because if you want to have a backup, at least, you're stuff, still yeah. stuck buying two. All right. All right. Well, let's. It's, it's much easier to put drives and hard drives in a RAID and have some form of redundancy where there's none on the tape. Right? Yeah. Redundancy is another tape <laughs> of the same copy. All right. Um, we'll see what happens there. Last bit of news for the week. Far Cry 3 game bundle for your OCZ Vector SSD. Here we go. Another reason why maybe SSD guys get it for the enthusiast markets that uh, hard drive guys do not necessarily. Here it is. If you purchase a 256 or 512 gig OCZ Vector series before July 14th, you will get a free downloadable copy of Far Cry 3. And I'm sorry to report, Alan, that this means you'd have to install another game front end called Ubisoft Uplay. Yeah, that it is less never, annoying than Origin, though. That it's actually the lightest weight of all of them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I should yeah, have went with that one from the beginning. With it. But you can't play Battlefield on Uplay. You're missing the whole point. You've got to have these self-contained markets so that only people can play your games on this little platform. It's it's I a long see. story. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it offline. It's it's a, it's a grown-up talk. We'll have to have. Um, obviously, Alan really, really likes the vector drive, comparing, you know, basically a toss-up between that and the 840 Pro, depending on pricing. Uh, and this is kind of interesting. So if you're a gamer and you want to buy an SSD, uh, let's see, where is the pricing on that? Where are we looking at for the 256? Um, well, they ain't the cheapest. That's the problem. 256 for 248 bucks. So yeah, under a yeah. dollar... And you get a copy of Far Cry 3, which say it's worth 50 bucks. Now it takes the value of the cost of that down to $200. So if we look up the 840 Pro, 256 gig. And you can't get it from AMD anymore either. So, so the 840 Pro and the Unless Vector are about the same price. 79.50s. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I was saying, the 840 Pro and the Vector 256 are basically identical in price on Newegg. 249 versus 248. But with the Vector... So it sweetens the deal on the Vector, which yeah. means that the Vector is now my favorite. There you go. And you get a free copy of <laughs> Far Cry 3. There you go. So uh, and, and with the 512 gig model as well, is that is going to be less cost per dollar? Well, that goes to the same link, Jeremy. We'll have to fix that. The 512. Oh! It's going to the... I was like, hey, wow, that's a... Did they include a free DLC with uh, Far Cry 3 that you got more co-op missions now? Actually, you know, there is one point to bring up between the Vector and the... Uh, 840 Pro. All right. And that's the so talk to us about Pro it because it. you know what? We need content. MSI desires well, content for their advertising dollar. <laughs> 840 Pro uses a smaller process flash memory, mm -hmm. which, even though we don't have any hard specs on it, most likely has a shorter, shorter uh, life. Right? Because okay. the Vector is using the tried and true 25 nanometer IMFT flash that they're packaging themselves to make it cheaper. So, uh, Chances are that's going to probably last longer if you, if you put them both side by side and wrote the same exact amount of data to both of them. Right. Just saying. Let's get into it's our hardware. It's going to last a really long time for either drive, but, you know. Let's get into our hardware software picks of the week. Um, mine. Before we go back, Keith, Keith 512 asks, should I get an 840 Pro to replace my X25M G180 gig? No. Yes. <laughs> I think Alan is just in so much shock that somebody has that drive. No, in fact, he's looking for that drive to show to us right now. Come on, show it to us, Alan. What, what G1, do you want to see? 80 gig. 
Oh, that? How was that? <laughs> I didn't know how to grab that. In fact, I got 50 of them right here. Yeah, it's Look, sitting over here by the tee. We're waiting. What I've got this? so many right now that I've got a card that? deck. Is that, is that one mine, Alan? No, it says A1 written on it. Mm. You ended up with mine. Meaning, meaning, meaning so, to the question, Alan, should he upgrade from a G1 X25M 80 gig to a vector of X size, I guess? If or an 840 Pro. <laughs> yes, 840 Pro. You need to if take your voice down. If he's using this thing for normal, just everyday, typical use, and maybe some gaming, like gaming, whatnot, uh, and he's happy with 80 gig, then he doesn't need to upgrade. If he wants more capacity, then upgrade. That's my take. I mean, I would put... I don't like your this, answer. I would put this drive into, like, a laptop that I was using or a PC that I was using. As long as it's on the 80... What is it? 8820 or higher firmware. 8220. Uh, the one that fixed the whole fragmentation over time bug. Yeah. Um, as long as it's higher than that, still a good drive. Doesn't okay. matter if it has trim or not. I don't think that's a very good answer, but... You're supposed to be the expert, so I'll let it stand. It's, I guess. It's, if I'm all about LSE progress. Is real, a I super want a new power thing. user, and he's like recompiling Linux kernels and needs all sort of random I/O per second. You know, Alan. I, I, Alan, I trust your testing, but you used a GTX 260 until like two months ago, right? Well, yeah, but here's the thing: he's already got <laughs> this. It's an SSD. It was very expensive when he bought it. Throw it's, that out and move on to the next thing. It still just, works. This just buy is, it. It's not often you know, someone's <laughs> graphics card is better. This is 34 model, nanometer like flash. SSD. It's probably going to outlast any current SSD. Still. All right, All right let's this move on. Outlast your mother. Let's move on. Let's move on. We're done. Hardware software picks of the week. I got a switch. Who's next? <laughs> a switch? <laughs> <laughs> because it died. You don't like your Linksys anymore? No. This uh, Cisco Small Business 100 Series 5-port gigabit switch came at the recommendation of Russell, the uh, uh, guy who does the engineering for the Twit group, uh, who, does, who has infinitesimal more knowledge about this crap than I do, when we were trying to figure out some issues. When he found out I was using a Netgear 5-port gigabit switch with a metal case, like, he, we were talking about all kinds of random problems, UDP, TCP, upstreams, and he was like, you're not by chance using a, like a Netgear 5-port gigabit switch with, like, the blue metal casing, are you? And I was like, yes, actually I am. He's like, oh, yeah, don't use those. Those yeah, cause all kinds that. of problems. So he recommended this. It was 50 bucks, uh, 49.99 on Newegg. I bought it on Amazon, so whatever you want to do will work. Uh, and it's just supposed to be better-ish. Now, it didn't solve our problems. Our problems were not actually related to that switch, but I do feel better on the network now not having... I've probably had that switch since 2004. Russell, didn't, didn't the Bloodhound gang sing a song about Russell? I don't know, but you're, it's not your turn to talk now. Jeremy, what is your yes. pick of the week? Well, first, I just can't believe you're not using a managed Cisco switch. That's I, just sad. I have no managed devices. It's, well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, his devices hey. manage him. Can I, can, okay. I use, can you put a managed switch on a hinge with superglue? Well, if you have to. I you could guess. put a spouse on a hinge with super glue. I mean, super glue and duct tape will pretty much attach anything to anything. Okay, all right. Anyway, let's go on your pick. Yeah, okay, it's artsy. Deal with it. Uh, there's an indie game that came out called Antichamber. It is freaking bizarre. Mm -hmm. uh, people are trying to sort of say, it, well, it's portal-like in that, well, you get a gun that doesn't shoot anything except something that uh, affects the environment. But in Portal, there was never a time where I had a little poster saying that, you know, just walk and smell the daisies and walking from, switching to walking from my normal movement rate suddenly meant that there was a stairwell there that wasn't there before so I could continue. Or it didn't put the exit behind an invisible wall in the middle of my settings room. It does have a settings room. It says this is all you need to know and you can change your settings. But getting to that exit, is not actually the point of the game. You do that fairly early, and it just sort of laughs at you. It's really strange. It's been a lot of fun, and I would sort of recommend 
given it a shot. It's on sale on Steam for about uh, fifteen dollars right now, I believe. Have you actually you've been, you've played it? I haven't finished it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's been interesting, and there is no safe, and it's time limited, so it's more about sort of exploring and just seeing this really weird, freaking odd place with some really neat programming tricks. You know, mouse over will do something. Hmm. Uh, draw object will actually change that object's effect. So if you don't look at something, that might actually be a good idea for you. Because huh. if you look at it, it's going to close. Yeah, I've been listening to some gaming podcasts and they talk about this. It does sound very interesting. No, it's Hopefully it's, one day I'll have time to play games. Well, yeah, I, like I say, I haven't had too Could much time to play it, but the times I've had have been good. Cool. Very cool. Josh, what do you got for us? Wait, you want to actually talk to me right now? Yeah, no. but I'm going to need you to turn Seriously? it down just a little bit. Turn it down just a little bit. <sighs> How about this? Perfect. Okay. You know, I, I reviewed this card some time ago, and now the price is low. Mm. And it's got an awesome bundle. The bundle. only problem is it's still got fans that kind of pop up above the shroud, so it's hard to do crossfire if you've got not a whole lot of space. And what's that bundle you get? You get Crisis 3 and Bioshock. And Bioshock Infinite. Limited offer, $305 after a rebate. Rebate. Are you just repeating every last word I say? Say. But only sexier. <laughs> I would never have used that adjective on, on that. Yeah, no. we know that. All right, now here we're supposed to talk to Alan, but I think maybe we lost Alan. Is he gone? Oh, he picks oh, oh, Origin. Oh, oh, oh. No, wait, here he comes. Obvious? Here he comes. He's walking back into the room. Come on, Alan. Come on in. Come on. People want to talk to you. Come on over. I do not pick Origin. <laughs> <laughs> this is not... it, it crashed our entire podcast. I do not. Okay, hurry yeah. up. Are you running Origin on the, on the podcast machine by no. chance? Because that's probably why I blue screen. No. Hurry up before you crash again. Oh, I forgot to type it into the thing. You okay, did. so uh, case modders and uh, anybody wanting to paint something temporarily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, paint this stuff's awesome. You guys heard of this stuff? dip. It's in a can that you spray. Ooh. You know what? It's like condoms you never have to rebuy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared that I was thinking the exact same thing, Josh. I don't. All right, that's so gross. this stuff is like five bucks at the hardware store, right? It's just like any other paint, except it's it's plasti dip that you spray on. So you put like four or five coats of this on whatever, and you can actually grab like roll your finger over an edge of it and like peel it off later <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Why is Josh laughing so hard? A sexual innuendo. <laughs> of course. Our stretchy, rubbery plasti dip. I don't. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I'm just reading from their web page now. I feel off. Shh. But uh, where I would like stretch it. Let's look at the case ago. studies. Creating reservoir tip only recommended for the experienced <laughs> user. <laughs> yes. No, really, it's uh, it's actually pretty cool stuff to work with. Um, you can. Uh, it's, it's like it basically like comes out like a matte black. So whatever you're modding, you know. <laughs> Josh is got his head in the <laughs> Look at him. He's like beat red over there. Did somebody crash his Skype? <laughs> yeah, just, just blue screen the pod. Could you launch Origin, please, Josh? <laughs> um, so this has anyway. been the PC Perspective Podcast. Yeah. It's not Um... Thanks for joining us, and I'm sorry, <laughs> just in general. Uh, I hope you got some interesting information in the early parts of the episode. Uh, but yeah, pcpro.com slash podcast, that's a URL. Send people there if you want them to be tortured like this as well. We have good information there. What's that hound that laughs like that? The... That's Mudley. <laughs> he knows. He knows who it is. Yeah. Uh, so that's Josh. Um, I'm under control. And pcpro.com slash live is where you can watch us record the show live on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. And stay tuned. February 19th, we will have a couple of special events for you. One of them will be a Crisis 3 uh, game stream. We'll have prizes and video cards and game keys to give away and all that kind of stuff. And more 
cool stuff to come. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm Ryan Schraub. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. <laughs> A I'm sober Josh Kyle. Walrath. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Alan, did Gosh. you even did you, Alan? Did you say did you say your name, Alan? Yes, I'm Alan Valentano. I'm gonna send a can of this to Josh. <laughs> as long as it comes back. Oh, God. <laughs>